Hey guys, Kara Sift here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the Kaito Henkeiju Deluxe Lupin Magnum from Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger vs Keisa Sentai Pat Ranger. This is a new weapon for the Lupin Rangers to use that can also transform into a mecha. So, let's get started. To start, we'll look at the Lupin Magnum in Magnum mode. In this mode, it's a red and black ornate gun. It's got a lot of nice details to it. Some of it painted out in a nice metallic gold. We've got the Kaito V emblem here. As well as a dial back here, which will come into play later. A little bit of metallic blue up here. A little bit of green up here. Some more silver here. And then you also have the panned in muzzle. It's got the same details on the other side. Though the emblem is not painted on this side. Then you have a crater down here. The speaker is currently not visible, but I'll point out later. And the battery compartment right here, this takes LR44 batteries, so they're already included. And you just need to pull out the tab to play with the toy. So on its own, you can pull the trigger to get a blasting sound. Holding the trigger won't get you any different sounds. So next we need to bring in the, the versus changer. Here is just a little size comparison where you can see that it's pretty big compared to it, though it's not quite as long as the versus changer. And so, next thing we do is, using this rail up top, we can combine them for some special attacks. So, combining them will activate the Lupin Fever. So, start we'll just pull the trigger normally. And we'll get that slightly stronger attack. Next, we need to get to the dial. So this has three special attacks, which are activated by turning the dial one, two, or three times. So we'll do them one at a time. So first you have the Itadaki Do Strike. That will do it two times. And we now get the Itadaki Dodo Strike. Then we'll do it three times. Now that time we actually got a random sound that can occasionally play when doing one of the special attacks, which is the Ikasama Do Strike. Which I guess is like some kind of a failure or gag attack. And there we get the Itadaki Do 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 Strike. And like I said before, it locks into whatever was the last special attack you used. And if you're curious about what the Versus Changer does and all that, it actually doesn't do anything. Having this attached actually makes it so that pulling the trigger doesn't make any sounds, nor does it make any special sounds when you turn the handle. So it, in essence, it locks up the functions of the versus changer, but then it changes the functions of the loop on Magnum. Next, we can transform the loop on Magnum. 
So to do that, we're going to need to take the dial and change it from this position to this one here, rotating it once counterclockwise. Then we'll pull the trigger. This activates the dialyze, then the Kaito Henke. To complete the transformation, just expand out the arms and then fold them over to the other side. Fold them down and fold down this plate here. Now we can do this a little bit more swiftly. But first I'm just going to adjust the camera a bit. Transform it back. You do it by sending it back to normal and then uh, returning the position back to here. And this time we're going to do it from this angle here. So you can see the transformation from the front. One more time. And here we have Lupin Magnum Robo Mode. So we can see that a lot of new details are re revealed. Or you can see a lot more golden green on it. We've got the face which has a nice thief mask on it. A lot more ornate details on the chest. As well as down on the body. Here is where we have the speaker. Right in the middle of the chest. We've got the fists and guns on the wrists. A little bit of silver, little bit of silver in the thighs. You can see that the halves of the gun barrel become the legs and feet. And you even see some nice details molded onto the inside of the legs so that they're not completely hollowed out. Now in this mode, you can rotate the arms all the way around. Move them outward slightly. Though that does reveal the gaps in the arm, which are a little bit unsightly, so not the best way to pose it. The nice thing about this is that in this mode, instead of picking up by the waist, you can actually pick it up by the trigger. And speaking of which, if you pull the trigger after transforming it into the robot mode, you'll now get a robot attack sound. Which is basically a different blasting sound. So think it's using its arm cannons. And again, it's very simple to transform it back. Especially because the way it works is that the legs are actually on angles, so when you transform it back, they actually come inwards towards the center. And when you transform it, they just fall into place. For size comparison, here it is next to Lupin Kaiser, where you can see it is considerably shorter. Though it does make sense since this is a combination of various pieces, whereas this is just a single gun that transforms into a robot. Though speaking of which, this also has functionality with other versus vehicles. If you take a look at the shoulders, you can see it actually has a couple of connector joints. So, if we just rotate the arms back like this, then remove the blue and yellow dial fighters from Lupin Kaiser. We can then attach them to the Lupin Magnum Robo Mode. And we now have Lupin Magnum Superior. So now it has some extra bulk to it. And you can use the articulation of the actual shoulder joints here instead of the arms. They have to be careful not to have this part knock into the dials or into the arms. 
And of course, you can still use the uh, elbow articulation of these dial fighters. So you can get into some interesting poses. Though unfortunately, this does not change the sounds at all, as it'll st still make the same sound when you pull the trigger. Though for an extra bit of fun, because it has these joints in the Magnum mode as well, you turn it back into Magnum mode and add a little bit more firepower by attaching these to the side, where you get kind of a modified gun here. I use, you call this the kind of loop on Magnum Superior act in Magnum mode. That's pretty interesting there. Though you do have to remove these to transform it back since these get in the way of the folding joints. On a final note, when it comes to the Lupin Field Vertex, you don't actually need to use the Versus Changer to activate them, nor do you technically need it to be in Magnum mode. So the way that works is that you have this little button here on the top, which is depressed when it's attached to the Versus Changer. So if you just hold it down like this... Now activate the Lupin Fever, then you can turn the dial. And pull the trigger. And they'll activate a special attack. And there we go. Overall, the Lupin Magnum is a pretty cool toy, though it does have a couple of things that makes it not so satisfying. It's definitely cool that it can be used with both the Lupin Magnum and transform into its own robo mode, and that it does have three different special attacks with the Lupin Magnum. Though the actual Magnum mode itself is a little bit more on the disappointing sound since it has side since it only has one blasting sound, and to get more sounds you need to either hold down the button to activate those sounds or actually attach it to the Lupin Magnum, where it basically cuts the fun or attach it to the versus changer rather, where it kind of cuts out the functions of the changer to make room for its sounds. And while the transformation is cool, and it certainly is an interesting gimmick where you pull the trigger and it has a partial AUG transformation, after that it doesn't do too much in that it again only has one attack sound. And while it is cool that you can attach other versus vehicles as alternate limbs to it, they don't really add that much, as you're kind of just adding new arms to it, and it doesn't change its sounds. And while the same is true for Lupin Kaiser slash Pat Kaiser, it kind of feels m more fulfilling with that, just because that Robo is pretty much designed from the beginning to have that arm swapping gimmick, and that this kind of seems more like it's supposed to be just kind of its own thing, with these being more of an add-on now. As for the big disappointments, it's kind of twofold. The first one is that this doesn't feel like this would be released so late into the series. It really feels more like something that could have been released around the early to mid point in the series, since this doesn't really enhance the main robots. It's not like a giant robot, like some of the other ones we see near the end of the series, and it's not something that can form a new big combiner with the other mechs as well. And the other part about it is kind of continuing on from my last review with the uh, Creator Machine Splash. This is something that is Lupin Ranger exclusive and I can say right now that this will not have a Pad Ranger counterpart. Which again pushes the show further into the territory of being heavily favored towards the Lupin Rangers when it shouldn't and that just honestly upsets me because it really feels like it's going against what it set out to do in the beginning. 
Overall, this is something that I would definitely call an optional toy. It's got its own neat little functions, but at the same time, this is the kind of thing where pretty much everything it can do, it can do on its own. And there isn't any actual reason to have any of the other toys in order to get this one. So, you know, if you want to get, go ahead and get, but this is also something that I can say, if you don't feel like it's worth it, it is something you can certainly pass on. Next time, I'll be reviewing the Deluxe Rise Striker, Tuesday at 6 p.m. PST. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're new and would like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.